Arthurflex Descent into Clownface and Joker is a fascinating watch, but it's not everyone's first choice when it comes to repeat viewings. The film is grim enough to make you want to zone out in front of something harmless, like the Murray Franklin show for a few hours. Get what you f deserve! Ooh, never mind. But fear not, we're here to find you some other flicks to scratch your mean case of Joker itch. Here are some of the elements that are absolutely central to the Joker experience. One, the Gotham City of Joker is crumbling before our eyes, both physically and as a community. Everything looks depleted, neglected, run down, gross. The streets are filled with trash, crimes rampant, people don't care about each other anymore. Hence, all the beatings. Two, at one point early in its development, Martin Scorsese was actually a producer on Joker. Though he ultimately wasn't involved in the finished film, it still features many of the director's trademarks, from a focus on male violence and aggression, to its affinity for underdogs and outsiders, to its grungy inner city backdrop. Three, obviously Arthur Fleck starts the film as a professional sign-spinning clown before going full-time into the mayhem business. But mean, angry clowns are an important motif running throughout Joker, and ultimately become the symbol for the mass uprising that closes the film. Clowns rise up! Four, the Joker is generally a violent character, but Todd Phillips' origin story really zeroes in on the aftermath of his carnage, refusing to allow the audience to look away from the ugliness and brutality of his fiendish actions. Finally, there are many films about disturbed characters on the edge, slipping into madness and turning violent. What set Joker apart was the fact that it's about the Joker, a character we feel we've already come to know and understand from decades of Batman comics and films. Joker is a true adaptation, not just bringing the character into a movie, but reinventing him cinematically from the ground up. So those were our big takeaways from Joker. And believe it or not, a lot of movies fit into all or most of these categories. Except the mean clowns thing. That's pretty rare. Two movies went five for five, matching every single aspect of Jokerdom that we'd identified. First up, Quick Change, the 1990 crime comedy that also has the distinction of being the only film ever directed by Bill Murray. Well, co-directed, he was busy also starring in it. In Quick Change, Murray stars as Grimm, an ingenious bank robber who hides his identity by dressing up as a clown. What the hell kind of clown are you? The crying on the inside kind, I guess. Grimm and his partners, played by Gina Davis and Randy Quaid, must then escape a miserable, chaotic New York, which seems designed to foil their getaway at every turn. There's a subplot where Murray must impersonate a stereotypical Italian mob boss, classic Scorsese, and the film is based on a novel by Jay Cronley that was previously adapted as the 1985 movie Hold Up. Oh right, we still have extreme violence. Uh, how about this? Does that look extreme to you? Bad luck just seeing a thing like that. Moving on to our other 5 for 5 match, the classic 1988 Japanese cyberpunk anime Akira. It's adapted from a manga of the same name and set in Neo Tokyo, a dystopian future megapolis that's experiencing its own massive civil unrest. And they don't even know that the whole city's just a few days from being destroyed. They're just mad about other stuff. In sequences that recall both Scorsese's Mean Streets and Goodfellas, our heroes Kaneda and Tetsuo engage in a violent gang war against a rival group known as the Clowns. And that's even before they fall in with the actual terrorist cell or become mutated by proximity to secret government experiments. Tetsuo! Okay, I'm done. Let's jump into our 4 for 5 matches. Alfonso Cuaron's Children of Men opens in the last days of human civilization. Bummer. Cities have fallen into decay because people stop being able to have babies, which is somehow even worse than a garbage strike. The film's full of graceful Scorsese-style long takes that don't just render the action scenes and shootouts more intense, but give you a very clear sense of place, an understanding of the small nuances and hidden corners of this elaborate future world. Plus, a lot of people get shot up real good. And the film is based on a 1992 sci-fi novel by P.D. James, satisfying the adaptation requirement we set. Remember that? Back then? Cool. Way to keep up. Our next film isn't just Scorsese-inspired, it was actually directed by the man himself. What are you doing at the meter? Did I, tell you to put, did, I do, did I tell you to do that with the meter? Taxi Driver tracks lonely, haunted Vietnam veteran Travis Bickle as he suffers chronic insomnia and ultimately, wait for it, descends into madness in a decaying and fecund New York City. The film's use of shockingly violent imagery proved controversial when it was first released in 1976 and helped to secure Scorsese's reputation as the leading American virtuoso of the crime genre, even though he totally, like, makes other things. See? And though Paul Schrader's screenplay isn't directly adapted from a prior work, he's noted on several occasions that this film was directly inspired by the classic western The Searchers, with Travis's quest to save child prostitute Iris mirroring John Wayne's search for his abducted niece. Cute! From the Joker to the Duke in just a few steps. We're getting good at this. Alright, let's talk three matchers. We've got a few. First up, Robocop 2. Yeah, that's right, part two. The first Robocop isn't based on anything, but part two is based on Robocop 1. The Detroit of the Robocop series is probably the most dystopian dystopia of them all, which covers the crumbling urban nightmare connection. Plus, the entire Robocop franchise has been noted for its extreme, over-the-top violence, and Part 2 explores a lot more of the grisly details of how the Robocop technology works, plus the villainous Kane orders a police officer vivisected and then forces a kid to watch. Yeesh. Even the Joker's like, I am out. Blech. You can also just watch Robocop 1. We won't tell anybody. Consider also 2012's Dread. 
the Judge Dredd character is borrowed from his long-running comic strip series. His adventure is set in the violent and chaotic future metropolis Megacity 1, where a shocking 17,000 serious crimes are reported each day, and the movie is almost entirely taken up by an extended series of shootouts. Don't worry, there are also some beatings. We haven't forgotten about the Joker's love of beatings. Finally, why not the original Scorsese De Niro King of Comedy? The story of frustrated wannabe stand-up Rupert Pupkin, who will do anything to snag an appearance on the late-night chat show of his idol Jerry Langford. It's played more for laughs than Arthur Fleck's saga, and has at least a slightly more upbeat ending without the horrific violence. But fans will definitely recognize the lead's desperation, his fractured, unreliable perspective, and his increasingly unpredictable mania. It's a fun watch! Two more great movies that are totally worth your while share at least two of five elements with Joker. Spike Lee's 1995 drama Clockers was produced by Martin Scorsese, and just as he often does, the film uses a relatively simple crime story to examine the inner workings of an entire community. It's based on a novel by Richard Price, who co-wrote the screenplay with Lee. It also features amazing performances from Delroy Lindo and Keith David that has nothing to do with Joker, I just wanted to mention it. And the 1988 horror comedy Killer Clowns from Outer Space features... Well, they're killer clowns from outer space. I mean, it's right there in the title. It's also pretty violent, especially if you're allergic to popcorn. So that's a lot of movies to check out, but if you're still undecided, we think you should go for King of Comedy. It'll jokerify you for sure. But if you want to apply some metrics to the madness, the film with the highest score on the Rotten Tomatoes tomato meter is Taxi Driver with a fresh 96. The highest user score on Metacritic goes to Dread with an 8.8. And the movie page with the most activity on fandom is Akira. Think you'll actually watch any of these recommendations? Which ones? Is there an even more Jokerific movie we skipped? Also, do you think Arthur Fleck Joker just inspired the other Joker? Or is Batman beating up like a 60-year-old man in the other movies?